Welcome to the Diamond Tobago Town News for Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Government to fund nursing research. Ministry of Energy starts bulb exchange drive. And the Soka Warriors in must-win situation against Honduras. Thank you for joining us. The best way forward for the field of nursing is for nurses to engage in the research and development of their field. This is the belief of Minister of Health, Dr. the Honorable Fuad Khan. Dr. Khan makes the proposal as he addresses the 21st meeting of the regional nursing councils being held at the Hyatt Hotel in Port of Spain. Minister Khan says he believes the time has come for nurses in the region to write and submit research papers to medical, pharmaceutical and nursing journals. He explains this will aid greatly in the development of the nursing profession. Minister Khan says he will place funds aside to aid nurses in presenting research papers. About $5 million will be placed in the budget for next year and ongoing if we could do more for research and development among our our nurses, doctors, etc., who want to write papers to move that forward. So I'm a strong believer that if you want to move forward, you have to have research and development and new ideas and innovative thinking. The health minister says he has many other plans for the development of the nursing industry, but they must first be made into law before he can institute solid change. I am in the process of developing the amendments to the Nurses and Women's Rights Act to do exactly that, to put it in black and white and writing that this is what is yours. Also the development of the nurses practitioner that will basically be um, trained to write simple prescriptions and do simple examinations, etc. Minister Khan says he believes the Caribbean should develop the nursing industry so that there is no shortage of industry professionals. I think it's time that we start developing our nurses to such an extent that wherever they go and however they do it, the Caribbean itself will produce nurses in a manner that is, we do it already, that will supply our shortage as well as a possibility of a worldwide shortage. The health minister adds that nursing can contribute in more than one way to the economy and he is willing to do anything in his power to support the field. A lot of places, if you realize, they get their income from external people sending back money to their families internal. And that is a large foreign exchange earner for a lot of countries. So when I decide and I say about educational movement, educational tourism, all those offshore medical schools that you see, offshore nursing schools, this is something I think the regional general conference is not thinking about to move that forward. So we will develop that process and as Minister of Health, I assure you that I will continuously support the Nursing Council, support nursing, but I would like some support from the councils themselves to be innovative in the movement as well as pushing the nursing profession to a very, very high level. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The Ministry of Energy and Energy Affairs has launched a data collection exercise to show how citizens' electricity bills could fill or should could fall significantly if they replace their incandescent bulbs with fluorescent bulbs. The Ministry of Energy and Energy Affairs has embarked on a major drive to educate the population about energy as it seeks out solutions for effective energy conservation. On Saturday, 25 families from Penal received compact fluorescent bulbs from the Ministry as part of a light bulb exchange initiative pilot project. The launch took place at the Penal Rock Road Hindu Primary School and is a collaborative effort between the Ministry of Energy and the University of the West Indies. In Trinidad and Tobago, as, as long as we know ourselves, we've been using incandescent bulbs. That is your wrong bulb that you have in your house. Now, those bulbs generate a lot of heat. If sometimes you put a bulb on in a room and room actually becomes hot. And it is because 90% of the energy that is used in that bulb goes to, goes to heat, is lost as heat, and 10% is used for lighting. So it's a very inefficient process. And uh, what has been happening in the world 
is that those bulbs are being phased out in the world. Australia has now banned incandescent bulbs. And I was told by uh, um, this morning that in Dominica, a country not far from here, that the government has gone into everybody's homes and they have taken out all the incandescent bulbs in that in the homes in that country and they have given the population the what they call the what what is it called Randy? The CFL bulbs, which is the curly bulb that you see in the grocery these days. And that of course leads to great energy savings for the country, which means saving in money. The 25 pre-selected households were required to fill out questionnaires and be interviewed about the possibility of getting their entire home bulbs replaced with energy-efficient ones. They also had to walk with their two most recent electricity bills and at the end of the project, they will provide their next two bills which will be used for comparison. The Ministry and UE's Physics Department would be studying the homes to determine if there is a reduction in their electricity bills due to the use of the fluorescent bulbs. The Honourable Minister said that energy is taken for granted in Trinidad and Tobago because there is so much of it. Energy touches every single thing we do in Trinidad and Tobago. And what I think that we have to do in Trinidad and Tobago is adjust our relationship with energy. And this programme here this morning is a step in that direction. Um, in that we have to begin to conserve energy. Because the more we conserve energy is the more we have to export. So if we clamp down on the diesel, illegal diesel trade, as we've been doing, it means that we have more diesel for Khaled to export. And if Khaled is exporting more diesel, he's getting more foreign exchange for the country. And it's the same thing too with electricity. If we save electricity, we are saving natural gas. And if we save natural gas, our reserves will last longer, and we will have more natural gas to export to get more foreign exchange to build more beautiful schools like this. Minister Ramnarayan said his ministry was considering talking to the finance ministry to initiate a series of incentives to replace all the incandescent bulbs used in this country. He said there are no local companies that manufacture the incandescent bulbs, which means that the phasing out of the bulbs would not mean a loss of jobs. Saturday's pilot initiative was the first of three, with others expected to take place in Central and North Trinidad, as well as Tobago, before the end of the year. Those who attended the function were privy to light bulb exchanges as well as fun and educational activities on energy conservation. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. When we come back, the Ministry of Planning one step closer to the finalization of National Spatial Development Strategy. The Ministry of Food Production is working towards ensuring food security through its National Food Production Action Plan. This assurance comes from Minister of Food Production, Senator the Honorable Devant Maharaj. Minister Maharaj reveals his ministry has been mandated by Cabinet to ensure the agricultural sector in this country is developed so as to be highly productive by 2015. The Food Production Minister explains this is in keeping with the government's promise of agriculture and food security, which remains a serious goal for the administration. Senator Maharaj says the National Food Production Action Plan lays out the framework which allows for promises made to stakeholders in the nation's agricultural sector to be fulfilled. These, he says, includes land leases to farmers and state work and educational programs being incorporated into the agricultural sector. Your government have approved some 500 agriculture leases so far. And the year is not completed yet. We promised in our manifesto again to link state temporary work programs with rural development, and we have delivered. A pilot project with the OJT agriculture was launched in Sandy Grandi at the Marpa Farms, and we plan to make this a national program as we join hands with the Ministry of Tertiary Education and Skills Training. Only a couple of weeks ago, the Ministry of Food Production signed an MOU with the chairman of CPEP, who is here with us today, launching a brand new CPEP program tailored for farmers, especially those with large farms. And next week, the Ministry of Food Production will be forming, formally launching the URP Agricultural Program in central Trinidad. 
Minister Maharaj says further evidence of his ministry's quest to ensure food security is the launch of the Karani Green Initiative pilot program. The program is now in its first phase. In this program, plot owners can rent their two-acre plots of Karani 1975 land over a five-year contractual period and then make the lands available to private farmers who have the expertise and are willing to engage in agriculture but do not possess the land. So far, we have over 25 farmers that have been contracted to cultivate crops in the first phase of the Karani Green Initiative. This phase will bring a total of 5,800 acres of these two acre plots into active, sustainable, and profitable production. Harvesting of the first cycle is expected to begin in August of this year, and a total of 4,500 tons of crops will be produced. A profit is ex estimated at 12 $4 million to be generated with this program. It is estimated also that in this phase, first phase, it will create some 60 permanent jobs and 120 seasonal jobs. The Food Production Minister says he believes by 2015, the program will have seen substantial benefits, many of which will positively affect the entire nation and economy. He is urging former Karani 1975 employees who received leases for agricultural land last week to engage their former employer with the initiative. Minister Maharaj says the ministry is already putting things in place for the farmers to be part of the Karani Green Initiative. The Ministry of Food Production and Namdevko has started the construction of several packing houses. The first being at Brecken Castle, the second in Tabakit, um, Brickfield in Tabakit, and we have others phased in. So these packing houses are being set into motion. So as you produce the land, there's a place to carry your produce for processing and eventual export and sale locally. Gregory McBurney, News 4. The Ministry of Planning and Sustainable Development is one step closer to seeing the finalization of the National Spatial Development Strategy. The business community had its say on what the plan should include and attained a greater understanding of what it meant to the country. For too long, we have gone without a land use policy and even though land use planning document was once developed, it did eventually lapse in parliament and was never given new life. <clears throat> I understand that the NSDS goes beyond what is provided for in the land use planning policy, and as such, I hope these documents do not suffer the same fate, but are used by the generations after us as a guide and will be continuously updated as our society's needs and requirements evolve. On Wednesday, the Ministry of Planning and Sustainable Development held its National Spatial Development Strategy consultation with the private sector at the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce. The NSDS, which is being piloted by the Ministry of Planning and Sustainable Development, is part of a package of reform of the planning and development framework for the country. As our cities grow and more rural land is developed, ensuring smart growth and practical environmental management and necessary goals. Before any development can happen, there must first be an infrastructure suitable to the needs of future growth. The master plan of any country should have the potential for guiding growth in a way that will generate a fluid movement of people and commerce, especially in emergency situations. The chairman of the Development Planning Steering Committee explained the reasons why the completion of the NSDS was important. The preparation of this National Spatial Strategic Plan is in response both to legal requirements of the planning legislation and to the felt needs for direction and guidance in the quest for sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago. In the first place, the planning legislation requires the minister responsible for tongue and country planning, and we now use the current professional and technical nomenclature, urban and regional planning, rather than tongue and country planning. Uh, to have in force a development plan for the entire country which makes provision for the orderly and progressive development of land and the manner in which that land may be used. The last such plan, the National Physical Development Plan, was passed by Parliament and made statutory in 1984. And despite several attempts by successive administrations to update that plan, particularly against the legal mandate that the plan should be reviewed every five years, the now grossly outdated 1984 plan remains the only statutory <laughs> national physical development plan. 
Minister of Planning and Sustainable Development, Senator the Honorable Dr. Bowen Tridatuari, delivered a presentation which outlined the future steps of the plan. The plan will look at hillside development, housing provision, land use conflicts, the national growth pools, and disaster vulnerability. The Ministry has already hosted a number of public meetings, the contributions of which have been included in the draft document. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. When we come back, more from the Gold Cup in our sport report. Stay with us. Once again, the senior men's national football team is in a must-win situation to survive in an international tournament. The Soka Warriors will face Honduras in the CONCACAF Gold Cup and only a win will ensure our passage to the quarterfinals. Wayne Cunningham is in Texas for the clash. News for Sports at the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Courtesy the Ministry of Sports and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. chances uh, but at the end of the day Haiti, Haiti took their, their chances and we, we didn't yeah but you said it and we, we have to we have to be more decisive uh, more more penetrative in, in the right areas of the field and in general we have to we have to show some more more passion and, and, and desire to to bring the ball back to attack to be a, you know a little more dynamic overall Haitian coach Israel Blake Cantero said this Trinidad and Tobago team is better than the one he faced in December in the Caribbean Football Union Cup and he had to pull out all the stops to beat them and that he did. Now with this 2-0 loss Trinidad and Tobago have to go back to the drawing board and once again is in a must-win situation when they face Honduras on Monday. Now it's off to Texas for the match. I'm here with Soka Warriors defender Justin Hoyt, just ahead of the Honduras clash in Houston in the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Uh, we lost against Haiti, and it was a crucial loss. Uh, tell us what is the mood in the camp following that loss, and has the Warriors regrouped? Um, we've regrouped. It's a very disappointing um, result, um, obviously, in the tournament that you know, we thought we'd have done well in, and you know, obviously disappointing to lose in any football game. Um, that was a very crucial game that we needed to win, um, but the you know, result didn't go our way. Um, but you know we have to. We've got one more game to go um, in this group, and we're just gonna have to give 110 percent now and make sure we come away with a victory and hopefully advance to the next stage. You want to be pros, being at a high level in the game uh, across there in England. Uh, tell us what you, what knowledge you imparted onto your less experienced uh, teammates. It's just my knowledge of playing in um, in a different league and my experience of playing in in different football. Um, English football is completely different. Um, so I'm just helping as much as I can, you know, some of the younger players and even, you know, some of the older players, just my experience of, you know, being around, you know, other teams um, outside of, you know, Trinidad and obviously playing in the English League. It's just, just to help and give my knowledge as much as I can and just help as much as I can, really. All right, let's just touch on your, your experience with the Trinidad and Tobago team coming out of, uh, of England now, joining the Soka Warriors. Tell us, tell us uh, how, you, how you're fitting in and all that. I'm fitting in perfectly fine. You know, and all the players have been very welcoming. All the staff has been, you know, welcoming me very well. And I feel part of the team. Like I've been here for years, really. Um, and I've really enjoyed my time. Obviously, some of the results have not gone our way. Um, but I'm sure, you know, over time and in the games coming up, we're only going to get better. Uh, you can see we're trying to play, you know, really good football. 
Um, we've got a lot of good players here, and I'm sure you know if we keep a similar group or you know some other players that haven't made the, the tournament, um, we've got a great squad, and I'm sure you know within the years to come, and Trinidad's football's got uh, a lot to look forward to. Thank you very much, Justin. No, that's the attitude in the Warriors camp ahead of that crucial match versus Honduras. Well, the Warriors have regrouped following the 2 0 loss versus Haiti, and we have crunched the numbers and analyzed all the scenarios. There could only be one result a win versus Honduras to take us through to the quarterfinal of the CONCACAF Gold Cup 2013. And Wayne Cunningham reporting from the BBVA Compass Stadium in Houston, Texas, for News 4 Sports. News 4 Sports at the CONCACAF Gold Cup. Courtesy, the Ministry of Sports and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. News 4 continues right after this. The Ministry of Works and Infrastructure is ensuring that motorists park correctly along streets in Port of Spain in accordance with the law. The initiative will see streets accurately demarcated, which goes hand in hand with traffic signage. The Ministry of Works and Infrastructure has answered the call of the Downtown Owners and Merchants Association for proper demarcation of parking areas in the capital city. Last Tuesday, the Ministry began the painting of yellow lines on streets at various busy spots in Port of Spain to alert the public about no parking areas. DOMA's president, Gregory Abood, said the organization petitioned former Works Minister Emmanuel George for the accurate demarcation of the allowable parking distance from corners in and around Port of Spain and in the general environs of St. Clair, Woodbrook and St. James. According to the Highway Code, it is against the law to park within 9 meters of a corner. Personnel from the Traffic Management Branch of the Works Ministry were advised on how to properly measure 9 metres from corners as there existed previous inconsistencies. Lines were being painted on streets from Charlotte Street to Richmond Street and Park Street to Independence Square. The absence of these lines have found many citizens fall victim to the wrecker and add to many traffic jams as persons park irresponsibly along streets. The yellow markings are expected to facilitate a smoother and easier access to and around Port of Spain and motorists are advised to take note of the demarcation lines and act accordingly. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.